treasured of trophies, the FA Cup. The Toon Army have made the long trip south. Wembley's just down the road. They'd love to be coming back in May, but that's a fair way off. It's Luton Town tonight, and they'll have to be good. The Army have brought the big guns with them. Beardsley and Cole spells double trouble. Still Beardsley. Oh, what a goal from Peter Beardsley. That is absolutely stunning. Andy Cole and Peter Beardsley, who between them have hit 45 of the 60 goals that Newcastle have scored this season. We're at Kenilworth Road to see if they can do it again as Luton Town and Newcastle United go head-to-head -head in this fourth round replay to a finish. Yes, extra time and penalties if needs be, and we kick off at 7.45. And are we on for an upset? Luton Town gave a good account of themselves up at St James's Park, leading for a long time. They've lost only one of their last 20 cup ties on this pitch, and Charlton's win at Blackburn last night surely will have given them heart. It can be done. In fact, there are giant killers waiting for the winners. It's Nathan Blake now. Still Blake. Oh, Nathan Blake! What a goal from Nathan Blake! Nathan Blake for Cardiff opens the scoring! Yes, Cardiff City, who beat Manchester City, await the winners. And their manager, Eddie May, would like to be here tonight, but he's got other business to attend to, an important Welsh Cup tie. Two men who have made it, I'm delighted to say, are Mick Harford, the former Luton Town striker, and Brian Kilcline, who, of course, had his hands on the famous trophy when he captained Coventry in 1987. He's two weeks away from Newcastle United. Welcome both. I get the feeling the earth could move here tonight with, the, with these two. <laughs> there must have been the odd confrontation down the years, eh? Can Luton do it tonight? Uh, they, they were a chance, definitely. They went up to uh, Newcastle and no one gave them a chance at all. They thought they'd just gone up there to play out the 90 minutes and come away with nothing. But uh, they've got them back down here. They've got a, a, lab, a passionate crowd here. First time there's been a, a big cup night for a few years and I'm sure they'll give them a good run for the money, yeah. Uh, what can Newcastle United expect, do you think, Brian? And uh, are they ready for the job? I think after uh, the last game, uh, the draw, I think they'll be going out tonight, you know, with fire in the belly and uh, Kevin Keegan will get them wound up the right way to go out there and get the right result because I'm sure that uh, the supporters especially will be wiring them up as well. The first thing you asked me when you arrived was what's the pitch like? There's been a lot of discussion about the surface at St James's Park which I think you attribute the, 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 the hiccup to in form. I think in the last two weeks or last three weeks the pitchers it's got very wet and very heavy and the top surface is just going up and uh, I thought coming down to Luton's pitch you know it might be a bit firmer but uh, apparently I've been told it's as soft as what it is at Newcastle so it might bring them down to earth a bit. There's a fair bit of sand out there Mick isn't there? What, what's it like as a surface? You watch as many games here as you can do don't you? You live just yeah, down the road. Yeah I, I live in Luton I watch a lot of games here you know I mean it's not uh, it's not the AstroTurf out there, and it's, uh, it's very muddy and it gets very sticky out there, very, very similar to St James's Park, and it'll be uh, a similar type of surface, I'm sure, as it was uh, in the first game. Uh, you know, I mean, it'll not suit the two teams. They play a, 
very intricate passing game, and it's, I mean, it, that's why there could be an upset on the cards. Well, there was at Ewood Park last night when Charlton Athletic beat Blackburn Rovers. Darren Pitcher scored the game's only goal as early as the 15th minute, and then Charlton held on doggedly. The reflection <coughs> there, I think, of Andy Morrison, but Pitcher quite rightly claimed it, and that was the goal that saw Charlton Athletic past Blackburn Rovers, a famous cup upset. And can Luton Town join them tonight? That result changed the odds somewhat. Manchester United, after that, came into 2-1. to one. That's the shortest any club has been at this stage of the competition to win it. 2-1. to one. Newcastle, the second favourite, at 7-2. to two. Arsenal, who play tonight, 7-1. to one. Leeds United, who play tonight, 8-1. to one. In fact, there are a lot of games going on up and down the country tonight. And, of course, we'll keep you right up to date during the programme with what's happening. Wimbledon, 25 to one. They've got Manchester United next time out. Bolton Wanderers there, 50 to one. We'll find Luton here at 150 to one. Brave man who'd put a pound or two on Kidderminster at 500 to one. Well, Luton Town really are back in the big time. In fact, they've been relaxing this week at a local health farm preparing for this one. Kevin Keegan's Newcastle make of this. Opponents Luton indulging in a spot of aquarobics. Goalkeepers Jurgen Sommer and Andy Pettersen are soon into the swing of it. Welshman Kerry Hughes seemed to prefer just to make a splash. Sadly, he won't be able to tonight. He's suspended. While defender Des Linton was more interested in drenching Scott Oakes. Indeed, Luton's motto this week may well be splash out to cash in because the team have been allowed to prepare at the exclusive Henlow Grange Country Club on the Hertfordshire-Bedfordshire border. Mind you, the casual visitor has to first get past Tate, the guard dog. But once inside, for cash strap Luton, this is a real treat. Yes, I think it's quite relaxing. It, it's away from the ground. It's, it's a lovely day and it's, it's pleasant grass. We can have a little swim and uh, we can relax and watch a video and, um, you know, we'll talk about Newcastle. No talk about Newcastle in the sauna, though. While John Dreyer relaxed with a quick dip. The players' reward for an impressive draw up at Newcastle in the first game. 17-year-old Tony Thorpe, the hero of the hour. But the teenage goalscorer will probably have to be satisfied with a place on the bench tonight. Luton's team were assembled for less than £400,000. That wouldn't even buy Andy Cole's right boot. So talk of money is never very far away. And when the draw was first made, I thought, oh, dear me, it's, we ain't going to have a cup run. But we battled to beat Southend at home, and that was an important game for us. And we got 8,000 people there, and we've got 32 at Newcastle. We should get 13 at Luton. So if we get through, Cardiff, there'll be another 20. So um, you can start adding up the figures. Talking of figures, one of the most influential over the years at Luton has been David Priest while former Everton star Alan Harper is another with plenty of experience. But the task of leading the attack falls upon the young shoulders of John Hartston. Kerry Dixon was injured in the first game, but Hartston looked sharp enough in training. And his boss believes he could cause Newcastle more than a few problems. But whatever happens tonight, for Hartston and the rest of the Luton team, it's a rare chance to swim with the big fish of the Premiership. I just hope that... Um um, the players project themselves well. It's all right having glamorous games, um, but it's very important we don't fall flat on our face. Uh, we didn't ask for it. We were drawn against Newcastle. Um, the, the fact that we've got to replay, good credit to the players. Uh, now it's up to them to go and pit their wits and their skills against some very talented players um, who play very well as a team and uh, see if they've got enough um, energy. They mustn't freeze, of course, and enough footballing ability to manoeuvre a goal or two because Newcastle's records suggest that they're capable in any game of scoring at least one. Now, we don't have to be mathematicians to realise that we've got to get at least two, maybe even three if they get two. I mean, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be tense. Well, that frames the life out of him, but we're very much looking forward to it. Live FA Cup football on Sky Sports tonight from Kenilworth Road. Luton Town against Newcastle United. Our guest here, Mick Harford, who's a big Luton man, and Brian Kilcline, who left Newcastle, what, only a fortnight ago. Uh, that's something of a tradition, Mick, isn't it, the health farm? Yeah, down the years we used to go up to Henlow Grange with uh, Stephen Purdue owns it. He invited us over and it was 
No, Luton had a lot of success a few years ago in the League Cup and the FA Cup. And before every game, every game used to spend a few hours over there, have a sauna, relax, and you know, train over there. And it was uh, it was just a wind down before the big game, and it, uh, it worked wonders a few years ago. That's how it was done the trick this week. Free match for Newcastle is a game of cards, Brian, isn't it? Am I right in saying you owe somebody some money? Yeah, I think the last time we played Happy Families on the bus, um, the lads sort of took me to the cleaners a bit. <laughs> they were over but, here uh, before, to tell yeah, you that too, Just before they? the game, they made sure they came over and made it perfectly clear that I owed them some money. But uh, <laughs> I'll go into the dressing room after the game and just have a word. Well, let's have a look inside the <laughs> Luton dressing room. We've seen Luton preparing yesterday. This is now... Chairman there, David Kohler on the right. Well, they look happy enough, don't they? Confident enough as well. Jamie Campbell there. Scott Oakes is in there as well. This is the Luton dressing room now. Listen, learn, respect and achieve. Well, that's the target to... <laughs> There's Jürgen Sauer, the goalkeeper, who's dropped the clock by the looks of it. Dodgy keeper. <laughs> Let's hope he's in better form tonight. Now is the time, is it, for Luton Town? Live on Sky Sports tonight from Kenilworth Road is the Toon Army. Two and a half thousand of them have made the trip. They're a well-supported club, as we know. We've seen them time and again on Sky Sports this season and been entertained at Holy each and every time. What tonight against Luton Town at Kenilworth Road? Luton back in the big time. To the finish tonight, extra time if we need it. Penalties if required. It's live on Sky Sports. Next up, the story so far. You're watching... We're at Kenilworth Road tonight for live FA Cup for football, the fourth round replay between Luton Town and Newcastle United. The head-to-head, -head, three previous meetings, Luton won back in 1973, a couple of goals from Johnny Aston. Newcastle in the fourth round in 81, Ray Clark and Mick Martin the scorers, and we know all about the most recent one, Beardsley for Newcastle, Tony Thorpe for Luton Town. Right, I think we can uh, get up to date with all the team news. Nick Collins is waiting for us. Nick. Richard, thanks very much indeed. Well, Luton make just one change from the side that beat Oxford at the weekend. Mitchell Thomas, who's been on loan from West Ham, he's replaced in the side by young Jamie Campbell, so a fairly youthful-looking Luton side, because they've also got John Hartson leading the attack in place of the injured Kerry Dixon. And on the bench, 17-year-old Tony Thorpe, the man who scored the goal at uh, St James's Park in the one-all draw, and then came on as a substitute and scored in that league game at the weekend. Newcastle, will they make one change? It's in force. Paul Bracewell is injured, so Rob Elliott comes back into the side. Otherwise, it's the same 11 that uh, drew one all at St James's Park. That's the last time Newcastle were in action. Well, with me is Paul Bracewell. Paul, commiserations for not being in the side tonight. It's, it's a hernia injury, is that right? I'll see the specialist tomorrow in London. Uh, and obviously, uh, if it's uh, an operation, I'll have it done as soon as I can. How long do you think you might be out for? Uh, probably four to six weeks. But like I said, I'll see the specialist tomorrow, and, and obviously we're guided by what he says. Well, listen, we'll certainly keep our fingers crossed for you there. Just a brief word about tonight. What kind of frame of mind are the uh, Newcastle players in? Lads are looking forward to it. And obviously, we've got the insight of knowing that whoever goes through plays Cardiff away. Um, and like I said, the lads be well cheered up. We've got another chance to go through. Do the players look at it in terms of being given a second chance after the one-all draw at St James's Park? Or do you think this is the hard bit of it to come? No, obviously, we had the chances to win it up there. Uh, and we're still in the hat, as they say. And uh, it's important that we finish the job off tonight. Well, listen, Paul, thanks for joining us. Hope the injury uh, gets better soon. Back to you, Richard. Nick, thanks very much. So the names and the numbers then. Luton Town first, and they wear squad numbers, as you can see. Uh, Summer, Linton, Peak, Drea, James, Telfer, Harper, Oakes, Priest, Campbell, and Hartson, the young striker. And Newcastle United, Hooper, Watson, Venison, Howie, Beresford, Lee, Elliott, Clark, Sellers, Beardsley and Cole. Well, let's ask Brian Kilcline first of all how much of a blow that Bracewell doesn't play. He's an important cog.
for them, isn't he? Yeah, he's a very important cog with um, the Newcastle side, but the lad they got into replacing Robbie Elliott, he's done it earlier on in the season and done a very good job. So I think um, they won't miss him as much as I thought. But uh, it should be interesting. Uh, Hartson plays for Luton, Kerry Dixon doesn't. Yeah, and you Kerry. were here at the weekend. How did you do, the young boy? Yeah, Johnny done all right. He's only a young lad, and uh, you know he's very, very strong. Uh, you know, I mean, it could be mentally more than physically uh, demanding in in such big games. But uh, I think Kerry will be missed badly. You know, I mean, he's a, he's a name. He's a he's a big threat. But John's a big lad. He landed the occasion very well. He's got a good head on him, and I'm sure he'll do well. In a word or two, if you stop Beasley and Cole scoring, can you win? No, I don't. I don't think everyone says stop Beasley and Cole, but you know, in Newcastle, they're not a two-man team. They've got, you know, I mean, they've got Robert Lee, they've got Sellers, you know, I mean, they've got top-quality players. So uh, I think if you were just to concentrate on stuff and them to it, I think you'd have other problems from okay, elsewhere. From somewhere else. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, let's have a look at the recent cut form of these two. David Pleat is no stranger to Wembley. He led Tottenham out for the 1987 final against Coventry City. But Luton haven't fared too well in recent years. This well-worked goal from Paul Telfer beat Southend in the third round and earned the hat as a tie at Newcastle. A win tonight for Pleat and his team would put them into the fifth round for the first time since 1988. When Kevin Keegan was appointed manager at Newcastle in 1992, the brief was, turn it all round. Last year, he faced another famous former Liverpool number seven in the fifth round. Kenny Dalglish and Blackburn ending the Geordies Cup run. Roy Wegerley got the only goal of the game. The Geordies Cup run this year started against Coventry City. It was Beardsley and Cole that put them into the fourth round with a goal apiece. The second was typical Peter Beardsley. Luton got off to a dream start, surprising the Toon Army with the opening goal scored by Tony Thorpe. There was some dispute about the equaliser. Peter Beardsley going over Alan Harper's trailing leg. He got up to score from the penalty spot. David Pleat is a wily old campaigner. In a season full of surprises, it's not beyond Luton tonight but Kevin Keegan and Newcastle are ready. It's a fascinating confrontation. Pleat and Luton against Keegan and Newcastle. Live on Sky Sports, a whole host of other matches taking place up and down the country tonight as well. And as I said at the top of the show, we'll keep you right up to date with goals as they're scored. Let's have a look at one or two of those players out there on the park tonight. Then we're relying on Mick Harford for some uh, detail on one or two of these from uh, Luton, Mick, because we don't see them all that often. What about Jürgen Sommer, the goalkeeper? He is gaining a bit of a reputation for himself, isn't he? Yeah, Jürgen came over from uh, America on trial. Uh, he's an absolute giant of a man, you know, I mean, you can see the size of him there, and he's, you know, I mean, under the, under the kit there, he's, he's, a, he's a phenomenal body on him, and, uh, you know, any, any high ball thrown in the box, he'll come and collect it. He's very brave, and for the size of him, he's quite agile. The only thing he drops is clocks in the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> John Hartson plays up front tonight instead of Kerry Dixon. Yeah, Johnny's got a lot of promise, obviously. I mean, there's a lot of clubs watching him there. He used to, I mean, he was apprentice when I was here. And I mean, you could see he had the talent and the ability, and he's been brought on nicely by, by the coaching staff here. And he, you know, he's an aggressive type, and he'll, he'll win headers in the box, and he'll, he'll challenge for everything. Uh, I'm sure he'll be a threat if the right delivery of the ball is right for him into the box. John Hartson of Luton Town. Peter Beardsley, uh, quite simply, is a threat and a big one tonight. I mean, we've been talking all season, Brian, about whether he should be playing for England again. What, what's the feeling in the camp at Newcastle? 
Well, at the moment, Pete is just inspirational for all the youngsters that are at the, the club. He leads by example. Um, he goes out and trains. He trains hard and he does everything right. And he just takes it out on a Saturday. And sometimes he's just... Well, you just can't believe how much running he does and how much he contributes to the team. And uh, if you was to talk to Andy Cole, I'm sure he'd turn around and say, Peter Bursley, one of the main contributors to the amount of goals he scored this year. Barry Venison won virtually everything in his time at Liverpool. Has he surprised you how well he's done as a central defender? Oh, he surprised me a hell of a lot. I couldn't get back in the side when he got in there. <laughs> um, Barry's done brilliant. Yeah, he came to the club as a right back. He's an aggressive and he's a leader of people. And, um, you know, there was a couple of injuries at the club. They moved him across into the middle. And uh, nobody's been able to budge him. Um, and he's been inspirational from there. You know, he's the kind of person who just get people around him going. And, and if they're not, he'll do them up the right way to get them going. That's Barry Venison, the Newcastle skipper. It's a smashing atmosphere building outside. Luton Town back in the big time. Place will be full tonight. Toon Army have made the long trip south, two and a half thousand of them. But Luton Town, beaten just once in 20 cup ties here, will be no pushovers tonight. They're unbeaten, in fact, since the turn of the year. Haven't lost the last four matches on this pitch after a very difficult start to the season. And it's to the finish, of course, tonight. Extra time if we need it. Penalties <laughs> if we need them. Kenilworth Road, our venue tonight for our live football, the FA Cup fourth round replay between Luton and Newcastle United. Very nearly there now, 7.45 kickoff at Kenilworth Road tonight. Luton Town against Newcastle United. FA Cup, fourth round replay. And Kenilworth Road is buzzing. The Toon Army have made the trip, so too has that flag. It goes with them all over the country. Who is it carries it, I wonder? Luton and Newcastle go head to head to the finish. The bookies are on Newcastle, 4 to 1 Luton. Newcastle, odds on. And the first to score, well, perhaps not surprisingly, Andy Cole, 11 to 4. That's as short as we've had. We were at Blackburn recently. Alan Shearer was 3 to 1 to get the opener, and he did against Leeds United. We haven't seen one that short. Andy Cole, 11 to 4. Beardsley's 5 to 1. Telfer, Oakes, and Hartson, all 10 to 1. The next live football, incidentally, on Sky Sports is this coming Friday at 7 o'clock, the Schoolboy International between England and Wales from Highfield Road. That's the first in a series of Victory Shield matches featuring schoolboys. There is Andy Cole. 30 in 30 matches. He's dynamite, isn't he? Well, we'll get Andy Gray's thoughts on the teams in a moment or so. First of all, let's go outside and hear what they're saying there. I think the boys are going to beat them tonight. Um, put a bit of a run together, so they're playing quite well. Um, been scoring a lot of goals. Good result on Saturday against Oxford, so I think they'll do the business. I think we'll do all right tonight. We like Kerry, but uh, we've got a new lad in there. He scored on his debut up there, and I think he's going to do the business again. And Scott Oakes, he's been playing really well. I think we've got a strong side act tonight and really good chance. I think we can combat Beardsley and Cold, and we should do it. And Jurgen Summers looking good in goal at the moment. Even if it goes to penalties, we should do him on penalties because he's a good keeper. If we can beat him over 90 minutes, it'll be ours. Goes to extra time, I've got to go for the Newcastle. But I do fancy to take over 90 minutes. Actually, I bumped into Keegan this afternoon in Luton, and he looked a very worried man. Well, I think we're going to win uh, because Luton missed the chance last week. Um, we missed several chances that might have gone in on a decent pitch. Uh, I don't know what the Luton pitch is like, but it's, uh, it, it can't be any worse than ours. So I'm looking forward to a good result tonight. Well, I think we'll win by three goals easily. Three goals, no doubt. Too much. Couldn't go, not another Blackburn. There's set no first division team's going to beat us. Absolutely no reason at all why Newcastle shouldn't do this lot. Couple of goals, Andy Cole, Peter Beardsley, down to Cardiff for the next round, do them, quarter-finals, all the way to Wembley, different class. 
just like that, as they say. No problem. It's been a season of surprises, hasn't it? Us, Queen's Park Rangers, Manchester City, Blackburn last night. Are Newcastle going the same way, mate? Uh, personally, before the season started, I fancied Newcastle win one of the Cups, obviously, out of the League Cup. Uh, but uh, I think this will be a very, very tight game. Now, personally, I think it will be a draw after 90 minutes. After 90 minutes? Yeah. Extra time? Yeah. Any predictions on the penalties? Uh, if it goes to penalties, I'd back Jürgen somewhere because he's a, he's a big lad. <laughs> Brian, and, uh, what do you think he's, tonight? He's a giant in that goal. Well, I think uh, a young lad said earlier, 3-0. Um, I just had a, a feeling all day. I think it's going to be a 3-0 victory for Newcastle uh, after 90 minutes. <laughs> no penalties <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> right, match commentators tonight, Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Good evening to you both. Hello, Richard. Hello again, everyone. It's uh, pretty tight and snug up here. A very compact ground, Kenilworth Road. Marvellous atmosphere as you've been uh, building up. And uh, I think a great deal of optimism from both sets of fans, as we've heard. Let's just check straight away on the team, starting with David Pleat's Luton Town. The manager has had little money to play with. He's had to use his managerial acumen to assemble this side. He's eking out all the experience of veteran cup campaigners like Trevor Peake, who'll be 37 tomorrow, and Alan Harper. Peake and Harper have been all the way in this competition with Coventry and Everton, respectively. John Dreyer and David Priest are others who've served plenty of time in the game. But there's a youthful spring in the step of the supporting cast, like Paul Telfer, who played for Scotland B last Wednesday. Scott Oakes, a current England under-21 cap. Jamie Campbell, who comes in tonight on the left of midfield. And the youngest of all, 18-year-old John Hartson, called up as the main striker because Kerry Dixon is injured. All this, plus an American goalkeeper with World Cup ambitions. It is an intriguing mix. It certainly is, Martin. And to start off, they have to get it right at the back. I think we may find at the back that John Dreher will be the man to pick up Andy Cole. I think we'll find that he'll follow him everywhere. Trevor Peake will give him the insurance in the back. He'll try and sweep up behind any time he goes. Alan Harper, an old teammate of mine at Everton, I feel will anchor the midfield area. And if Peter Beersley drops in there, you can bet your life Harper will pick him up. But it's in the rest of the team that's going to be fascinating and where it depends. Telfer will be looking to get forward. They're looking to get width on both sides. Expect both fullbacks to push on the overlap at any time. They'll want to get forward. It's important that they get him on the ball. Priest will go and fetch it from anywhere and then he'll be trying to slide balls down the side for them. If his passing's on, then Luton may be in business. Again, Scott Oakes will drop off the front. They'll only play the big lad, John Hartson, up front on his own. Oakes, Oakes will then be asked to make runs all around him and get himself into the box. But it is from here, these wide angles, where I feel that Luton think if they can get crosses into the box for John Hartson, then they have a real chance. Newcastle haven't played since Luton left St James's Park, but the gap couldn't guarantee a clean bill of health. Paul Bracewell, as we've heard, has had to give in to a persistent groin problem. Robbie Elliott did play instead of him in the third round win over Coventry, and he covers for Bracewell again in midfield tonight. Don't rule out the Fox factor either. The new signing from Norwich will be eligible for the league game at Wimbledon on Saturday, and that fact alone should keep a number of tonight's side very much on their toes. Well, there's not a lot of new things we can say about Kevin Keegan's formation. The back four we've seen so often play this season. It's in functioning again. John Beresford will obviously get forward and help Sellers on this side of the pitch. Lee on this side, helped by Watson on that side. Elliot will just drop in and do the Bracewell job there. The holding player in midfield will allow Lee Clark to get forward and support the two front men. But, of course, if Luton can't control Beersley and Cole, that may well be the downfall. Well, David Pleat, Andy, is one of the most interesting men in football. He's always got a theory, he's always got a comment, he's very available and accessible, he's very popular with people in the game. And I know you've had an opportunity, a rather unique one, to talk to him about the tactics for your boot room show tomorrow. Is there anything you can tell us now? Well, obviously, David, as you know, is very tactically minded in football. It was brilliant of him to, to agree to me going in this afternoon about five o'clock. We sat down in the boot room, had the tactics board out. David's boot room. David's boot room. Had the tactics board out. He told me what he felt Newcastle's strengths were and how he was going to contain that. And then he also said how he felt he could he could actually win the game 
So we've got that all down on tape. It's all there. There's nothing David can do about it now. It's all gone. But it was interesting to hear him say, Martin, when finally it was all over, I said to him, you know, that's it. The tactics are right. It was amazing for him to tell us then what would be the most worrying thing on his mind. It really was. The lads have gone. They've just gone out that door. Your tactics are right. What one thing? Take the tactics out of it. What would be the one thing that worries you most as you walk out that door to take you to your seat on the touchline? That we don't freeze. That we don't freeze, that, that people are brave enough to try and express themselves and don't treat the ball too much like a hot potato. Well, there's a lot more of that, and you can see it all with Andy on the boot room tomorrow night. But we're concentrating on the real matter in hand, of course, the match. It's very nearly a full house here at Kenilworth Road. Half of the Premiership put out of the FA Cup already. Six of them sent packing by sides from lower divisions. Luton looking to add their name to a list that already includes Bolton, Bristol City, Cardiff, Port Vale, Stockport, and the most recent addition, Charlton Athletic. That was some result last night. Well, if, if ever Luton needed something to give them a boost, Martin, apart from their own beliefs, that must surely have been that result from Ewood Park last night. A result, I mean, I'm the greatest respect to Charlton. A result that took all of football by surprise. Well, on the left, Jim Parker from Preston, who gave the penalty that led to tonight's replay. It's been a little bit of... Uh, conversation half an hour or so ago about the potential color clash not really between Luton and Newcastle but between Newcastle and the three officials Kevin Keegan happy to take the risk David played a little less so but in the end there was no huge argument about it it'll just be something to keep an eye on as the match shapes up yeah, Kevin actually did see that he says well I'm quite happy he says because that at some time might give us uh, 13 outfield players against your tennis head, so you'll get no complaints from me. <laughs> this has re recently not been a very good ground for Newcastle. They've just had one victory here in more than 30 years in the league. That was achieved 13 years ago with a goal from a man who's here with us tonight later to become a Luton legend, Mick Harford, in his short spell in the black and white stripes. Still waiting for the remainder of the Luton players to fill in the line behind Trevor Peak, the birthday boy tomorrow. He knows what it's like to win the FA Cup. He did it in 1987 with Coventry, with Brian Kilcline, of course. Well, Luton Town seventh from bottom in the Ensley First Division. Newcastle United proudly standing fourth in the Premiership. In the FA Cup, the gap could count for nothing. It's all about who gets it right on the night. You'll find the answers right after the break. It's FA Cup football tonight. The fourth round replay between Luton Town and Newcastle United to the finish. Match commentators Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. So Jim Parker from Preston is the referee. Luton have been looking good. They're in by far their best run of the season. Nine matches unbeaten. Four home wins in a row. 
The pitch is somewhat scarred, but the ground staff were telling me that spring has definitely sprung. The grass is starting to grow again. We've had three very fine days down in the south. There's a chill in the air, but there's a real warmth in the cup tie. And here's Jamie Campbell, a young man of many parts who's played in the centre in attack, in the centre of defence, and is now on the left of midfield. Hartson with a big responsibility on his young shoulders. Des Linton is number 19. And here's the talented Scott Oates. And immediately, Newcastle find that they've got to defend. defend the corner the one thing I can reveal Mark about David Pleat the chat he really did want a quick start from his team a fast start he felt was important they're not the biggest side Newcastle United and, uh, Luton really committing themselves and a surprise package Trevor Peak, who's not known for goal getting and not always sent forward, but right from the start, joining the posse in the penalty area. Yeah, he does think he's got a, an advantage height-wise, David Pleat. And he's going to use every one of these tall players that he can at every set piece. And that's why Trevor Peak was pushed forward in a corner. John Beresford he got to the semi-final of the FA Cup with Portsmouth a couple of years ago and of course was one of those who failed from the penalty spot in the shootout he won't be first in the queue if it goes to penalties tonight Steve Howie Newcastle travelled down yesterday they're staying down in the southeast because they play at Wimbledon on Saturday and that will bring back memories of a cup exit but because of course it was Wimbledon who knocked Kevin Keegan's team out of the Coca-Cola Cup the crowd almost on top of the players here and an invigorating start from Luton to lift the home spirits Hartson Oakes has got plenty of freedom to move either side of centre Another corner conceded by Watson. What a confidently struck pass that was from John Hartson. The real out taking a chance though. They've left Andy Cole upfield with only Alan Harper marking him. And Mike Cooper's recognised that and cleared quickly. Yeah, that's a gamble, Mark. It really is. As Harper cleared over his shoulder. Newcastle had players swarming into midfield. Linton came from Leicester, where, of course, David Pleat was previously manager in a joint deal with Scott Oakes. Both really establishing themselves as regular league players this season. playing surface at St James's Park this one not dissimilar really it will cut up more and more as the evening wears on but we've got two teams here who believe in passing the ball David Priest very much the playmaker for Luton Town I think his 10th year with the club Beardsley and of course Liverpool Linton only Hartson to aim for 
although the supporting players were moving quickly. A better ball he was in, John Hartson. Three of the back four of Newcastle stood up for offside, but John Beresford in the picture there, he dropped off. It's just over a year since Newcastle were last here in the promotion season. The game finished goalless. I think the, the viewers will see already how the emphasis is on pressure from Luton's point of view when they don't have the ball. You watch any time a Newcastle player is in possession, a Luton player will immediately try to put him under some pressure. Well, that was John Dreyer decking Andy Cole, and the referee saw nothing wrong in the challenge. Harper ran into Robbie Elliott. It's a cover ball by Beardsley. And Lee Clark coming in, Beardsley is there. And the first major problem around the big American goalkeeper, Jürgen Sommer. Well, they got out of jail a little bit there. Clark's the one that was from here, and I think it drops for Peter Beardsley. I thought he's just going to stick a, a foot round it. But one of the Luton defenders manages to get a block on the shot. Cole is back on his feet again, but he's rather carrying his left arm as though he might have a problem with a shoulder. It came prior to the skirmish in the penalty area. With John Dreyer, the defender involved, the player with the major responsibility tonight for keeping tabs on Cole. Harper. Nice touch by Oakes, Telfer gives it him back. Hartson going towards the near post, but the ball wasn't. Nice centre passing there. Here's Paul Telfer. Well caught by Hooper, who yet again wants to use the ball quickly, but doesn't do it as well that time. Priest, Telfer, and it'll take on Beresford, the crowd right behind him. Well, Paul Telfer has had something of a battle to overcome because he was in a dreadful car crash 14 months ago, although the scars more mental than physical. That doesn't look too good for Andy Cole, the way he's just holding his arm there tucked in by his side. Leaving it here for Clark. Campbell. Not the best of kicks by Summer. waiting on the edge of the area hoisted high by Watson that can't be the best policy against this giant goalkeeper although he really didn't take it at its highest point six foot five but watch how the goalkeeper lets it drop it's almost picks it off the, and the Cole's head you'd normally be expecting a goalkeeper this has to be calm and take it at its highest point you see how low he takes it Lee Watson who's Regain the right back slot. Steve Howey 
is the best equipped Newcastle defender in the air. Cole, cool enough. But he's still struggling. Clark trying to link up with Lee. Here's Harper. Venice. Here's Lee. Beardsley holding a position on the right-hand side. Trying to just wrong foot Julian James there. He's got a corner. He wants to take it quickly, and he has done. Clark. With perhaps a chance for the shot, although in the end he let Luton get to him. Crowded him out. He had an opportunity there, Lee Clark. Inside the Luton on the break here. They might feel they've got the right man on the ball in Oaks. Hartson trying to stay on side and then he couldn't come up. Oaks with the sort of pass that would put Hartson through. Well, I think he should have used his striking partner there. John Hartson. Very much so. Like Lee Clark refused to use the ball early enough. I thought that Scott Oaks was guilty of that as well. Luton have never won the FA Cup. They got to the final in 1959 but lost to Nottingham Forest. Hartson, will it drop for him? Oh, it's a corner. Well, it was a very intelligent header from Telfer. Ball drops here and he sees Hartson's got himself some space. He can't get it down quick enough and that just gives Clark the opportunity to get the block out. Well, Trevor Peake has never scored for Luton. I wonder whether this will be his night. He's certainly being encouraged to get into an area. Try and inconvenience the goalkeeper one way or the other. Well, if they're going to use their height advantage, Mark, they'll have to have better quality than that. Harper, who'd stayed back again. Campbell. Oh, he took a chance then. Nick from him by Lee. Sellers. Intercepting was little David Priest. Oaks having a look to see if there was any help. It's a long way behind him, but it does break for Telfer. Linton flags up for offside against Jamie Campbell, who was trying to get round the back. He had an opportunity as well. John Hartson had pulled on to Barry Venison, and that's the policy they're trying to do. They're trying to miss out Steve Howie. They feel that he's the best header of the ball at Newcastle, of course. So they're trying to miss him out, and the opportunity was there to do so. Dreyer, who's very left-footed, was actually signed as a left-back, playing in the centre of defence tonight with Peak. Here's the Newcastle left-back, John Beresford. Benison, who came here in the FA Cup with Liverpool and uh, was beaten 3-0 on the famous occasion. Watson, Beardsley again has gone to the right. Newcastle so good at mixing up their play and drawing defenders around. get into wide positions we feel that David Pleat might be worried maybe a better quality of cross than Luton have been able to provide themselves well that arm can go up but I'm not so sure about the other one <laughs> he's still been hindered by it there's no doubt about that Lee, Elliot, now Watson, Lee, Cole, and Elliot, could have used Sellers, but just turned into the defender. 
Linton. A raid down the right from Luton with Oakes. Switch to Priest. Linton noticeably has got forward. Oakes crosses. Oh, and Hartson was just a bit flat-footed for a second. And he's been able to retrieve the ball on the far side. Julian James. Oakes again. Sellers. Here's Lee. Newcastle have only failed to score in two games this season. One of those was that nervous opening day performance against Spurs. Beardsley, oh, they could have scored here. Well, that's his trade, isn't it? Peter Beardsley picking the ball up slightly deeper and running at players. And when he starts to do that, he's so difficult to control. Look how positive Peter Beardsley is here. He drags it away, and as soon as he sees the space, he's into it. One, two, three, four strides, sets it up. You can see it just sets up for him. And I think that's the reason he's not on target. Well, he kept Newcastle in the FA Cup in the first game with that penalty equaliser. Hartson, Hooper comes, Hartson's round him, the goal is there, and he's taken it splendidly. Luton Town lead in the 17th minute through the 18-year-old John Hartson. What a very cool head on such young shoulders. This isn't easy. He can see Mike Hooper coming. His touch has to be that delicate. Otherwise, he pokes it out of play. But oh no, not only that, from the touch, he's ever so cool. Many young kids would have rushed that. Could easily have stuck it into the ground. Not John Hartson. This was complete composure. What a start for Luton. Well, it's part of David Pleat's skill that he keeps uh, pulling out these young players. Hartson is a Welsh youth international. And so far, he's the hero here in this fourth round FA Cup tie for Luton Town. And uh, almost as though the moment had got to him, he tripped down, and I hope he hasn't tweaked an ankle, no one near him. He's... Uh, mind racing I'm sure well they now set Newcastle a poser again just as they did at St James's Park when of course another teenager Tony Thorpe gave them the lead but Beardsley couldn't get there peak half cleared back header from Telfer a good touch from Oakes Hartson is sure in his work Hartson again Oakes lovely play by Luton the runner from midfield is David Priest. Campbell to the left, he's forced him too wide. Telfer darting into the centre. Cleared by Venison. It's all quiet from the Toon Army at the moment. Beardsley might lift their spirits straight away. It's a brilliant run, and he's tried to chip this huge man, and he did get the ball up high enough to get over the goalkeeper. It wouldn't drop quickly enough for Newcastle beyond Jürgen Sommer and in. There are no ways to describe skill like this. Brilliant skill, great vision, and what is he? He's about a yard out of completing it. But here's the goal that David Plate will be looking at and admiring again. He gets himself in behind Steve Howey. Look how delicate his touch had to be. He knew there was a six-foot-plus goalkeeper bearing down on him. But he kept his head and finished it wonderfully well. I just looked at John, past him, Martin, and he had a bit of a problem. He took a tumble just after the goal. I don't know whether he twisted something. He's down now getting some treatment. But he certainly twisted something. Whether it was his ankle, his knee, and that's certainly not good news. I saw it happen, Andy, and it was well away from the play. Just on a soft part of the pitch. And there was no one near him. But Kevin Keegan, who has done so much for Newcastle, now has to do something to get things organised. 
Now, anyone who knows David Fleet well will understand that he'll fidget and he'll fret. And maybe even more nervous being a goal up <laughs> than if the goal had gone in at the other end. It's a confidential call down to the bench. He's every right to be worried because certainly Peter Beersley has opened them up twice with consummate ease. And Newcastle have looked likely, as likely, probably more likely to score than Luton have in this opening 20 minutes. But Hartson, who owes his place to a badly cut ankle for Kerry Dixon, now has a problem perhaps with an ankle of his own. I'll tell you what will make the problem easier will be the adrenaline pumping around that young boy's body at the moment. And he certainly won't want to go off. quickly getting bodies around him. Here's Watson. Fennison. It's not a characteristic Newcastle ball. Still needed defending and James got his head to it. Big five minutes this in the game. Having just scored, David Pleat will know that the last thing he wants his team to do is Give up that means. Beardsley. Beresford. Really much to accelerate. Oh, and Beardsley was just trying to touch it off there to Lee, who was waiting. Watson. It's a poor clearance by Telfer. Almost hit Peter Beardsley. We're looking at a hat trick in 20, 21 minutes, Peter Beardsley. This is a difficult chance because he doesn't know John Rear's going to miss it. And the ball just hits off him rather than Peter Beardsley making contact with it. It's a really horrible ball for a defender to deal with. You actually don't want to touch it because you could be scoring an own goal. And Beardsley's really buzzing. Cole certainly affected by an early injury. But at the moment, the hitman is John Hartson in his first season of league football. A flavour of the FA Cup at such a tender age. And such a contribution already. <laughs> Telfer's throw. Hartson got there. Very nearly got it back for Linton. As they load the penalty area again, Luton Town. With the taller players like Des Linton. Like Trevor Peake. And again, just Alan Harper. With uh, a bit of help from David Priest, left back to look after Cole. Oaks takes. Way off the hearts of It's assured. Oaks whips it in. Venison has to head it out. Didn't miss the front man out, Scott Oaks. Oh, it came off Venison, Hartson. They've just got enough bodies around the ball, Newcastle. It bounced back off Barry Venison towards his own goal. And Newcastle grateful for the chance to regroup here. I think we can see why David Pleat has put such emphasis on putting the ball in there, putting his big players in there. It caused a lot of trouble because Newcastle haven't looked comfortable clearing their lines when the ball's been loaded in like that. Where they are comfortable, of course. Newcastle is passing the ball around midfield. Look at that Bolton have gone up through John McGinley. Are they going to do it again? away replay as they did to Everton earlier this season and Liverpool last season. And another of the big boys behind here, Newcastle United. Venison 
and lets it run. Been a lot of controversy around Luton Town, I suppose, over the last 10 years or so. Not popular for the uh, previous plastic pitch here, then for that ban on visiting fans, which gave them problems in cup ties. I remember that they were actually thrown out of the League Cup. Funnily enough, I think the team they were supposed to play was Cardiff. <laughs> well, they'll be playing Cardiff in the fifth round of the FA Cup this season. Campbell, Oaks. Oh, it's a lovely touch. He lifted over Beresford. He's capable of the extravagant. Scored a couple of amazing goals here recently. He's certainly full of confidence, Scott Oaks tonight. That a very ambitious attempt. Harper. Oaks with another clean touch for Linton to lock forward. Hooper has to come and head it away and does that well. Dreyer shooting. Right from the halfway line itself. Shot at goal, do you think? Yes, definitely a shot at goal. <laughs> oh, he spotted Hooper off his line with that attempted header clearance. And he made up his mind, and why not? The FA Cup is full of glory stories. So why shouldn't John Rea try to add his name to those? No, oh, it wasn't a bad effort at all. And, uh, Hooper, having headed away, was a long way from home. Put a shoving there by Hartson. Ah, let him get on with it. Six or one, half a dozen of the other, both competing for a loose ball. I always think at times, linesmen are a bit quick to stick the flag up when there's physical contact like that. The ball from Beresford. Player on top of a complaining Andy Cole. Linton, Leggy, but a uh, run that gets Luton going again. Priest, Campbell, saw James bursting on. And Oakes actually ran into his face a bit, but Venice in any case moved out to make the challenge. It's coming at Newcastle at the moment from all angles. Shots from the halfway line, <laughs> the left back on the charge, and the ball already once in Mike Hooper's net. Put there by the... Uh, one out-and-out -out striker selected by David Fleet tonight, John Hartson. <laughs> studying Cole closely there to see whether he was really able to put everything into the chase. Well, he's functioning, Andy Cole, but not on all cylinders at the moment. <laughs> the last thing... Uh, Newcastle would need at the moment be to lose a player who's scored 30 of the 60 goals they've got in all competitions this season. Well, that must be three kicks. <laughs> Sellers. Watson. Campbell can't get to it. Chris caught him. And Jim Parker who has a bit of a reputation in the game, rather like the hanging judges of past history. He's a referee who reaches for the notebook often. He certainly allowed the flow in this cup tie, which is providing terrific entertainment here at Kenilworth Road. No, it's not half. I think they're coping quite well in this near side, Luton, defensively. They've got enough bodies there, but there are one or two gaps on the right-hand side, and if Newcastle can switch the ball quickly, then players like Watson and Lee might find themselves with a bit more space. Beersley. Hunting him down quickly was Priest. Now the referee's got to take some action here. Is it a Newcastle free kick? Is it more likely perhaps a drop ball? Yeah. Alan Harper says, oh, I'll go in for this one with Robbie Elliott. Goes Newcastle's way, not for long. Another very accomplished layoff from Hartson. Howie. Lee. 
Brooks, he's unattended through the centre, but Freya uh, didn't see him. Of course, if Newcastle were a goal down in a Premiership game, maybe the nerve ends wouldn't be jangling quite as much. The players are only human. It's almost as if uh, at times you can uh, wonder whether the Newcastle players are already reading the headlines. Something that they don't want to read about a Luton victory. It's a long way to go yet, though. We've only had half an hour, but what a half an hour. Statistics say that Newcastle have had more of the ball. The crucial fact is in the top left-hand corner of your screen. <laughs> That's a major start as far as David Preet's concerned. But Luton have been bright when they've had the ball. And they are so again. Oaks. There the wasn't a defender around Hartson. Barry Venison might argue that he could leave him because he got to the ball easily enough. Scott Oakes has had one or two opportunities in this right-hand side, Martin, to deliver a cross of quality, and he has it. I mean, this is a challenge. He goes up very early and over the top, but I'll tell you what, is there anything wrong with that challenge? Not in my opinion. He went for the ball, he went up very early. Well, they're usually so bubbly down on that bench. Not at the moment. The last time Newcastle, of course, came close to the FA Cup, it was Kevin Keegan who stopped them collecting it. The final 20 years ago, when Kevin scored twice for Liverpool, and Terry McDermott was a loser that day for Newcastle. Town really trying to relaunch themselves as a club with a, a relatively new group of players, particularly the youngsters. Reese is one who's been here a long time. But Oaks couldn't take it on, but once more the promise was there. Once more the suggestion that though you feel Newcastle were quite capable of getting a goal or two here, Luton might well strike again. Beardsley, Cole, plenty of strength there when he needed it, a hit peak, and a bit of push and shove between Hartson and Venison. It's amazing isn't it, Scott Oakes' touch for the first half of this match has been superb, but hasn't let him down, but when he needed it most, it wasn't there, we will be really disappointed about that. It was a glorious opportunity for him to stride through onto Mike Hooper's goal. Oaks. Put forward quickly by Peak. Elliot's header. Cole flicks it on. Dreher is covering. Given time to. That's one or two options before using Linton. Harper. Sellers. Number 30 will be 30 tomorrow, Mike Hooper. That's what Harper's in the side to do. Get his tackles in. In front of the back four. Clark. There's Harper again. Giving uh, good insurance for David Pleat's players at the back. Elliot. Again, Beasley just uh, dropping off to get the ball and get the pass through to Clark. Stopped in the act of shooting. Well, the vigilance of Peak. There's danger every time Beasley gets himself in possession of the ball. 30, 35 yards from goal. Beautiful pass. Just over 10 minutes to go to half time. Lee got to it. Now we going in. Linton was on hand for Luton. 
Lee. Well timed tackle. It was James who did it. That's great play. It really is from David Priestmark. His team were under pressure. They needed it relieved. He's the only man upfield from the corner. He got it down. He was prepared to battle for possession, first of all. And then he worked a throw in. Harper, who also played his part in getting the ball away. That's a good play by Luton. Lifted by tonight's challenge in the FA Cup. Oaks, Linton. Still might get a shot in. Charged down by Howie. Harper. Can Oaks reach it? Now Scott Oaks, who comes from a showbiz background, his father, a guitarist in the pop group Shawadi Wadi. So he's uh, grown up I remember as them. an entertainer. He used to go and watch them. They're still <laughs> playing, Scott was I telling know. me. His dad's very busy. They call them revival concerts. He's not a musician, the Luton number eight. He's a footballer and a fine one. I think Luton have already shown us in this, in this first half the quality of the football when they, when they do go forward, when they break. They've got good movement, good quality on the ball, and they've got people who are prepared to accept it. Well, I think it's fair to say that the game is being played at a pace above for that which Luton face week in, week out in the Hensley Division 1. Oaks. Hartson out jumps the goalkeeper and a brilliant clearance by Benison. Quite astonishing off the line. Hartson again. Linton. Well, who knows whether that in the end might be absolutely crucial when we add it all up tonight. Again, Hartson, aerial ability, Hooper's never there. But I tell you what, that may be the moment that keeps Newcastle United in this year's FA Cup. That's quite magnificent. There have been many great things said about this guy this season. But that beats them all. Campbell. I think it was Howie who felt the full force of that. This has been a smashing first half, it really has. It's zipped along at a great pace. There's been quality in the football from both sides. Defending's not always been great, but that's only added to the entertainment. Lee Clark. Former captain of England schoolboys, and uh, it's an appropriate time for me to mention that the schoolboy internationals are very much a part of Sky Sports football coverage. Friday night, England versus Wales, and we're bringing you all the Victory Shield internationals. And then on Sunday, a later kickoff than usual from the FA Carling Premiership, Norwich City against Arsenal. of the season. Cole, Newcastle, who could have been two down, trying to get back to 1-1. One, one. Well, he's not fully filled out yet, John Hartson, at 18. <laughs> What's he going to be like? <laughs> well, Arsenal, the holders provoked into a reaction. Alan Smith back in the side tonight has equalised. And Sheffield Wednesday are now level at home to Chelsea. Luton lead Newcastle. Clark. Such a strength of Newcastle. The way they link up from midfield. Lee Clark 
who is particularly gifted in that respect. They haven't yet been able to round anything off. Maybe a set piece will do the trick. Swung in by Scott Sellers. Over Howie. Down the back comes Robbie Elliott. Blocked by Linton. Well, they didn't react for a split second. They all stood in the corner, beat everyone. But they were thankful, I think, that Robbie Elliott just dwelt on it a little bit too long. You know, Newcastle haven't scored in their last five league visits here. The last game in which they did score was back in 1984, and one of the scorers that night was a certain Peter Beardsley. You can bet your life David Pleat knows that fact. <laughs> He's a wonderful student of the game. You can bet your life Peter Beardsley knows that fact as well. Watson. Here's a crease on the stretch. Ball from Watson down the line for Lee. Cross comes Dreyer. Newcastle are going to turn this round. They're going to have to play very well indeed. We'll only uh, continue the spectacle of this fourth round FA Cup replay, which is in a fascinating position here as half time approaches. Venison. Sellers. Free kick. It's a well-documented fact, of course, that Newcastle relies so much for goals on Cole and Beardsley. 45 out of the 60 this season. And in recent times, the percentage has been even greater than that. Beardsley. Clark. Now Beresford. David Peter be concerned about Luton holding out here. It was a deflection, not a back pass. Summer. He'll be concerned about his goalkeeper giving away possession like that. That's crazy. Approaching half time, you're under pressure. John Dreher has just given them a right rollicking, and quite right too. Lee. Newcastle not exactly laying siege to the Luton goal, but they've redoubled their efforts. Venison. Well, that was just a, too brusque from another strapping lad, Jamie Campbell. Well, half, half time's a big moment, isn't it? Clark isn't here yet. Luton uh, hanging on a little. David Pleat can get his troops in at half time. He'll be delighted with this scoreline. Telford. Head down, trying his luck. They kept it. I'd have been encouraged if they run into the corner. Take them on, keep possession. Well, most of the Luton outfield players have had a strike at goal, and that will be encouraging for David Fleet. Over Howie and Hartson. Well, I would have thought Luton have had more shots than that. Maybe John Dreyers hasn't counted. <laughs> physically demanding game of football that he's adopted tonight pressure 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 when they don't have the ball and they haven't had the ball for long spells in this half so his team have had to work very hard so that'll be the first thing you'll be looking at as the second half goes on if that looks as though that's happening right underneath our cameras it is <laughs> it's such a tight position here again he's closed down time when no words were needed. 
will draw a veil over the replay, and Scott Oakes has got the wind back in his sails. First half. Lee, it's another corner. Put behind by Peak. Luton has brought everyone back. Well, the goalkeeper didn't get to the ball at his highest point again. Cole. Sellers, there's no one going in for the return there. I think Jürgen Sommer will be pleased about that. Because at a time when you're desperately looking for your goalkeeper to come and take a good clean catch, he was unable to do so. There came Summer, but the uh, ball didn't stick. Beresford, Sellers. It's a tackle from behind on Scott Sellers by David Priest. That change of plays on an awful lot for them, Mark, from left to right. I said before, Newcastle haven't used it often in the first half. Sellers, Beresford, Newcastle have got them lining up in the centre, Watson, claiming a handball, remember of course it was a penalty that Paul Newcastle level in the first game, they don't get a penalty here. Lee, glanced at Andrea, got it out, Beresford slices it. Jim Parker blows for half-time. Newcastle, who were behind in the first game, are behind here in the replay. John Hartson, the 18-year-old, taking his chance superbly. He would have had two, but for Barry Venison. It's a cracking cup tie at Kenilworth Road. Luton Town won, Newcastle United nil at half-time. Kenilworth Road is the venue tonight, Luton Town playing Newcastle United, FA Cup fourth round replay and Luton are edging it at half time, 1-0, they've had five shots, three on target, Newcastle three shots, haven't hit the target yet but they've had by far and away the best of it in terms of the possession, 55%, Mick Harford and Brian Kilcline our guests here tonight, make looking a little nervous with Luton one up at the moment, can they stay there? Uh, they're playing very well. Uh, you know, I mean, they've, they've rained a few shots in. Uh, Johnny looks very dangerous up front. Scott Oakes, you know, I mean, a lot of pace. They're getting the ball wide. I think uh, if they carry on the way they are, I shouldn't see any reason why. But, uh, you know, I mean, they're going to have to expect an onslaught from Newcastle sometime in the second half. I'll have a word with Brian in a moment, but here's the goal that separates the sides at the moment, scored by John Hartson, and it was a cultured take as well, Mick, wasn't it? I think the keeper's, I mean, it's come and it's, uh, it's a brilliant touch by young Johnny and, I mean, all credit when he's kept his head and tremendous finish. He should be proud of himself for that one. I'm sure his, uh, his dad, who I was speaking to on Saturday evening after the game, will be, will be very pleased with that, yeah. Great Dave. touch. Uh, perhaps the keeper could have cleaned them out, but he'd have got sent off. So, uh, you know, all credit to the lad. It's, uh, it's a great start for him and I give him a lot of confidence because he's playing very, very well at the moment. 1-0. It might have been 2, Brian, but a, for a very timely intervention by Barry Venison, who cleared another hearts and effort off the line. We were speaking beforehand, weren't we, about how well he's done for Newcastle this year. And when better than this, eh? Well, it's a natural instinct for a defender to get round and cover his teammates who are challenging for the ball, and that's a prime example for anybody <coughs> looking on how to do it correctly. Um, 
As Andy said um, in commentary, Brian, this, this keeps them in it, doesn't it? This gives them a real chance still at 1-0. Two makes it very, very difficult. Oh, it's a great bit of defending there from Barry Venison, and uh, we expect nothing, you expect nothing more than that. David Pleat was saying before the match to Andy, uh, they recorded, incidentally, half of the boot room programme for tomorrow night. You must watch that at 8 o'clock, that he was hoping Luton didn't freeze. And they haven't done that, Mick, have they? No, uh, he said it'll be 1-0 at half-time, very nervous, but... Uh, you know, I mean, it could have been two, and uh, you know, the young lads is a good blend of experience and youth in there. And you know, I mean, personally, I think they've done very, very well, handled it well. You know, Speaking a... of which, if I may interrupt, talking about handling, there was an incident right on the whistle there at half time which may have led to a penalty. Was this handball? We sit very close here to the, to the action, and instinct it looked to me very much like a handball. Uh, I think Newcastle were very unfortunate when they get a penalty. I don't, I don't think it was the, fir the first one, I think. He it was the second one, well. wasn't it? It's Campbell. Yeah. Campbell. Would, would, would you have given a penalty there? Would you have been claiming a penalty in that situation? Uh, definitely. Definitely claiming a penalty there. I'd have been screaming at the referee to try and make him see my point of view, yes. But uh, that's football. The uh, referee didn't see it. Luton players didn't see it. Newcastle players saw it, but uh, it's still 1-0 to Luton. It is at the moment, 1-0 to Luton Town, which is a situation that uh, would worry David Pleat, it seemed, when he spoke to Andy, before the match. At half-time, walking in here, what, what, goal why up, would you be happy? A goal up, we'd be very nervous, I think. A goal up? A goal up, we'd be very nervous, yes, and we'd have to think what they're going to do to, to, to push it, pull it round for them. Uh -huh. What about... 8 o'clock tomorrow night, Andy's boot room, it's uh, going to be fascinating. I watched them record, as I said, the first half of that this afternoon. David Pleat will be back tomorrow night after the game. Later scores elsewhere, up and down the country tonight. Fourth round, Stockport nil, Bristol City 1. All half times, as you can see. Fourth round replays, Arsenal 1, Bolton 1. McGinley gave Bolton the lead. Alan Smith has equalised. Barnsley and Plymouth still goalless. Leeds and Oxford still goalless. Sheffield Wednesday 1, Chelsea 1. John Spencer for Chelsea. Mark Bright equalised for Wednesday. Stoke City nil, Oldham one, Darren Beckford, West Ham nil, Notts County nil. And in Scotland, Scottish Cup third round replay, Dundee two, Clyde Bank nil, Britain and Shaw for Dundee. One nil to Luton Town at Kenilworth Road. John Hartson's goal separates the teams. What can the Toon Army do about that in the second half? Are we looking at another upset here? We'll be back at Kenilworth Road for the whole of the second half, live, in a moment or so. One nil to Luton Town at half-time in this fourth round FA Cup replay. Mick Harford, can they hang on? Can they go one better? Find another one. It's, it's going to be difficult, I think. Newcastle looked very threatening. Obviously, Beasley's uh, I mean, he's a tremendous player. He looks very talented out there and the touches are great. Uh, they're going to come on. They're going to push on the second half, undoubtedly. And uh, they're going to be a threat. Briefly, Brian Kilkline. Will Kevin Keegan change anything? Uh, I don't think so. I think he's just got to say to the lads, he's got to step it up a few gears. I think uh, Luton had him shackled fairly well in the first half. Well, very well, because they went in 1-0 up. In the second half, I think you've just got to step a gear, step up a gear, and go out there and try and get a, try and get an equaliser. And I think the game might completely change them. It's been a smashing 45. The FA Cup this season littered with giant killing exploits. Are we looking at another one here? Luton Town lead by a goal to nil. Let's rejoin Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thanks, Richard. Luton getting a tremendous reception as they come out for the second half. The club that missed out on the Premier League, they were relegated in 1992. They were two points off going down to Division Two last season. They struggled through the autumn months this season. But they've come into this tie nine games unbeaten, and I think that confidence has shone through. And now the side that have been 11 times in the FA Cup final, Newcastle United, only Arsenal with 12 have been in more have to try and turn it round. On the scoreline, Luton have the supremacy. In terms of touches of the ball, well, Newcastle were 
able to manufacture many more and to some extent control the shape of the game but they haven't so far been able to break down a defense that's been superbly marshaled by Trevor Peake sort of side you'd always back to score they need a goal now well Jamie Campbell will have learned then that you don't try and pinch a ball in that situation you go in to win it over Telfer on from Oaks Howie backed by Benison Des Linton can let it run I think the one thing, Martin, that would have concerned me if I'd have been in David Fleet's shoes would have been Peter Beardsley because he has dropped off and he's got space and he's turned and gone at them. And I think if he has three or more situations like he did in the first half, then I'd, I believe he'll eventually punish them. So that's going to be important for Luton that they do stop that. Watson. Hearts on the goal scorer. Benison, who stopped him getting the second so spectacularly. Beersley again sensing where there might be space. Oaks. Quick word from Nick Collins. Nick. Martin, talking to Kevin Keegan, he says Luton have done their homework on us, but he admits it's a great cup tie and he says he hopes that the younger players learn something from tonight David Pleat says he thinks Luton are playing better than they did at Newcastle though he reckons the referee is giving all the free kicks at Newcastle <laughs> but he did add <laughs> but he did stress but then I would say that wouldn't die <laughs> Folks. well Kevin Keegan did say that he thought he'd seen all that Luton had to offer in the first game, but they couldn't come up with anything to surprise his side. Maybe he has told the referee about his free kicks, because that certainly didn't look like one, but Luton got it. David Priest played that little move ever so well, man. He was desperate for a front runner. And Hartson wasn't doing it. He was pulling short for the ball, but he held it, he held it, he held it. And this is another area where they've worked in training. Back of Benison's head, Hartson. And in the end, it's curled over by James, and Hartson had an arm up in an appeal. Well, he didn't give this up. That's the secret to it. Viciously bent in free kick, and all Barry Benison can do is just help it on. But the youngster didn't give it up, and when they wanted a bit of luck, they wanted it to drop to a white shot. It was a black and white one that was able to clear it. I think Mike Hooper's mighty glad of that. That's twice now the young kids almost embarrassed him by getting in front of him on headers. Sore shoulder for Cole. The soreness will be longer lasting if Newcastle don't turn it round here. Oaks, Hartson, wrestling with Howie. He is a big lad, isn't he? John Hartson. He really will be a handful. Put himself about very well. I think his manager will have been delighted with this first 50 minutes from his young centre forward tonight. Campbell. Oaks. And he found Lee, who couldn't do much with it. play from Luton again, overconfident in the end. Overplay in the end. I think sometimes we played two or three passes, the opening was there and then they played a, a pass too more, too much. Julian James, like so many, has come through the ranks here. Beardsley. Priest. Now Lee. 
has missed a couple of days training recently with a touch of the flu. possess a very long throw there's not much space to get a run up here and he goes short to venison flags up they haven't many targets for a long throw had the newcastle you don't imagine them aimlessly to tossing a ball into the six yard box and hoping to get a flick on does he fit into terry venable's plans i can only imagine the answer to that is yes well that's 50th gap might yet be attainable has been stuck on 49 for almost three years Linton here's Harper it's Beresford in the way Elliot Harper gets it back Venison Andrea who Sweeps the ball from left to right with a fair amount of accuracy. A magic run there from Des Linton and a very fine tackle to stop him from uh, Robbie Elliott. He was a little bit casual, Elliott, in the initial pass, but he more than made up with it with his recovery. Here's Beasley. Oh, and James couldn't get it. Lee's in behind him. Chance for Newcastle. And Cole was waiting. To kill off the chance in the centre. Good, never good arrived. Play from the centre back. John Dreher takes a great position up here. But a little bit unlucky because James just takes his eye off it. But look at Dreher. Look how important it was for him to be in front of Andy Cole. Sellers to take the corner. Steve Howey to come in from the edge of the area. The ball goes near post. Harper feels he might have got a call to let that run behind. Instead. Newcastle have another chance. Elliott waiting by the near post. Short to Clark. Sellers. Luton pushing out. Back it comes from Beresford. Hartson with a sound header down for Priest. He's got Scott Oakes pulling away to the right-hand side. And Campbell herring up on the left. Here's Lee. Well, cut off by Linton. And he's leaving Andy Cole, is it? Not quite Cole showing the sort of commitment that Newcastle need in abundance here. Luton had plenty of the same with David Priest. And a clever pass to for Hartson. Hard to take. Howie just tucked in behind him in the nick of time for Newcastle. Beardsley. Cole did well to stay on his feet. Harper. Well, Andy, you know all about Alan Harper. You were FA Cup colleagues. Everton. he's still going strong and he's got a cool head and a very sure touch in the ball and playing in that position and just in front of the back four it really is a help for them still uh, lives and trains mostly on Merseyside Oaks put through by Priest Hooper's come and ball is that oh you're joking how did you get away with that well Jim Parker, the referee, has just patted his hip. If it's hands, it's a sending off. All the Luton fans know that. It's not given. And now the game is stopped, and David Priest still just having a passing word with the referee about it. Well, we're not going to see it, I don't think, properly from that angle, Martin, because it, it doesn't really show us anything. But perhaps this is the one. Oaks is just trying to touch it round them there. There it goes. It comes off the hand, there's no doubt about that. Comes off his body, then his hand. The referee has judged it then. Priest. Beardsley. Sally. 
Rodriguez. surprise Martin and if we thought the pace was up in the first half it's, it's gone up a notch or two in the second half press oh, how do you keep up with this Beresford now Sellers Newcastle United, certainly one of the bright lights of this season. In trouble here in the FA Cup. Andy, I don't often disagree with you, but I must say on the replay, I wasn't so sure that it struck the hand. See, the replay was a conclusion. My first opinion, Martin, seeing it happen, was I thought it was handball. That was my first opinion. As soon as it happened, you get another look at it here. He's touching it around. Or can we? Uh, a little bit of both, I'd have to say there. I think it did hit his body, but I also think the arm stopped it going through. Certainly not intentional. And perhaps the referee took that into consideration. And if he did, full credit to him. The intention was certainly to get a foot to it if he could. It's still 1-0. That's a talking point. That uh, quite breathtaking goal line save from Barry Venison in the first half another it is one heck of a cup tie James strong as Luton need to be in their physical and their mental approach here Hartson Priest the options way on the right Priest going through the centre Linton who started on the forward run expecting perhaps to get the ball directly Harper Trying to drop it in behind Sellers. Telfer will reach this one. It comes for Oaks. Thanks to Venison again. I'm not so sure that he knew an awful lot about that this time, Barry Venison. But he's in the right place at the right time. Otherwise, I felt his team again would have been 2 0 down. Scott Oaks arriving perfectly to a beautifully pulled back ball from Telfer. It really was. Oaks with the corner. Hartson. That was Dreyer with the volley. Priest. Uh, I think Beardsley was a little bit taller than him. Sensibly played by Peak and another old hand, Alan Harper, just letting it run for summer. Well, you just cannot take your eyes off this match for a second. What's the score? <laughs> Is it still 1-0? There was so much happening, Mark. Now, if I was David Plate, I'd be... We know in the game that David's a bit of a worrier and he, he's a fidget and he's... He, only, he wouldn't be convinced to say they're going to win this game if they were four up. He's that type. But the one thing I would be... Not concerned about, but he's probably sitting, standing there enjoying this game, thinking it's a wonderful football match. But at times like this, he probably wishes... I wish my team could just shut up shop, contain Newcastle and see out the game and we could win it 1-0. But Probably. certainly with the way the game's going, that doesn't look like it's going to happen. We're getting news that Oxford United have taken the lead at Leeds and John Byrne, the great cup goal scorer for Sunderland a couple of years ago, is the man there. I have to say, Martin, that Jürgen Sommer has not filled me with a great deal of confidence, even in that little straight, ordinary ball through. John Dreher made the decision to leave it. There was certainly no call from his goalkeeper. And both Peek and Dreher let them know they weren't too happy with him. He, of all the Luton players, looks the most nervous. Oh, the kids out there at the moment that David Peek was worried about are so high on confidence. Lee. Watson. I can't believe Newcastle are going to go through this game 
not testing the goalkeeper. And with an hour gone, Jürgen Sommer still to make his first save in the match. Cole might have to make a save here. Beardsley, it's a tight angle, hits the post. Now Beresford. Lee runs off Campbell, does it? Off Lee, because the goalkeeper saw that and let it run. The shot was a blur from Peter Beardsley, and Luton were saved by the frame of their goal. Well, I thought they were just picking this out the net, because Peter Beardsley connects quite brilliantly with this. Peak does everything right. He blocks it, he gets it away from Cole. But unfortunately for Luton, it drops to the man you wouldn't want to drop it. Look, it's past the goalkeeper without him even moving. When you want a bit of luck in a cup tie, and you need a bit of luck in a cup tie, Luton had that in abundance there. They might need some more here. Oh, I've got the long legs of John Dreyer to thank, but it's only a corner. There's a lot more defending of this type, I feel sure, ahead of Luton's central defenders. Watson's in there. Bit of a delay for Newcastle because Peter Beersley had to go and retrieve the ball. No one from Luton in a hurry to get it out there for the corner. Clark has the signal. Watson can't connect. Cole does. And Summer holds it. That's better. It's amazing, Martin, but a simple, straightforward catch like that will give the goalkeeper some confidence. It's a nothing catch from. They managed to get the head in it. They're competing very well all around the pitch. And that's better. Chris Allen has scored a second goal for Oxford at Ellen Road. They have an amazing season, even by FA Cup's standards, this is. There's a whole book of cliches surrounding this great competition. And the uh, Premiership clubs being picked off one by one. But Newcastle still hoping and still with Cole uh, threatening. Telfer. Hartson did well to get there first. Campbell trying to do likewise, but Sellers was just too quick for him. Elliott, wave after wave now from Newcastle United. Beresford backing himself. Harper has to concede the corner. He'd love to have found a little bit more pace on the ball there so that he could let it run behind. I felt in the first half Andy Cole was conspicuous by his absence really from the proceedings but he's certainly been involved a great deal more in the second half that's Linton alongside Howie well that's an area where David Fleet will be furious if his team lose a goal from a corner played in because with such an advantage height wise it could only be lack of concentration it looks as though they're marking very much man to man Watson Ooh. Wow, Peak came right into the back there of Robert Lee. Watson, Lee back on his feet. No one wide of him. Dennison trying to give him that angle. Goes infield to Sellers. The flag's up for offside. And Luton for a moment, only for a moment, can draw breath. Well, that's the problem. At the moment, they have no outlet who's able to get hold of the ball in the last third of the field, or even just over the halfway line, to give them a breather, to give them a chance to get out. In the ball! <laughs> Pass, Pass the, the ball. ball. <laughs> is that what he's saying? <laughs> the trouble is getting it, David. Hartson. Back it comes again into Luton territory from Watson. Dreyer there with the head. Cole. Beardsley uh, battling for the same ball. Harper. Caprice, a lot of room. Good movement from Oakes. Now Telfer. 
Now maybe they can put one or two passes together to please the manager. Linton. Orthodox cross. Trying to involve perhaps Campbell around the outside. Wasn't deep enough for him. Beardsley. Got the break there. Dreyer tried to come up with a last-ditch tackle. The referee says play on because uh, there was even one further defender, Linton. And even Beardsley provoked into uh, a show of frustration that the whistle didn't go. The most that even tempered of men. That was a last-ditch attempt. Had he not made that tackle, Martin, he must surely have scored Newcastle. With so many players over on that side. Sellers. Venison. Dreyer backpedalling. Off his head. Summer can pick it up. A certain generation of football fans grew up believing that Newcastle United had a monopoly on the FA Cup. They won it three times in five years in the 50s. Great side built around Jackie Milburn. But even in the 50s, when they came to Luton for league games, Newcastle invariably went home heavily beaten. Lee. Oof. Beardsley. Priest gets it back. Hooper's kick only goes to Telfer. This promising young Scott who has played at under 21 level and uh, recently in the B side. That's what David Peake doesn't want. No pressure at all on Des Linton. And he gives the ball away. Right. When you get tired legs, Martin, that happens. And I suspect that there are one or two tired legs in that looking side. Even, we're well, not even in the 70th minute, but they've had to work very, very hard, particularly in the second half. Venison for Beresford. Crossing away through, Dreyer put a stop to that. Hartson herring across and <laughs> really buffeting Venison over. It was the exuberance of youth, and to his great credit, Venison accepts it at that. That's true. It was the exuberance of youth, but credit Barry Venison for getting up because let's catch him. The ball goes clear, it comes in and catches him. The referee, quite rightly, a quiet word in his ear. Here's Sellers trying to shake things up. Watson gets a second chance. Rush, little rush of blood there. Anything across goal from Steve Watson there. a chance this from Watson as it breaks him second time must go across the goal across the face of the goalkeeper it looks as though Luton are preparing to make a change and I don't think there's any surprise in that they're finding it so hard to stem the tide at the moment it's an onslaught at the moment Martin. it's just a rear guard action Sometimes cup ties are like that. You have to accept that you're going to have to defend. You're going to have to defend in depth. you just got to scrap your way through. And that's what Luton have got to do just now until they can get another foothold in the game as an attacking force. Well, Newcastle must know that they're very much in control, but they also know that the clock is not on their side. And the consequences of failure here would be a very disappointing chapter in what has been such a classy season for them. 
But uh, not thinking of failure at the moment, particularly Beardsley. He's been bright as a button as usual. And Hartson now is going to get booked. Having fouled Venison, he just caught Beardsley. And it happened too soon after the other one. I don't think it's for this particular tackle, although it looks horrendous when you see it second time round. I think it's just a case of there have been two or three of those. The referee saying, well, that's one too many. it's happened in February I think that will still mean a two game ban now Venison hoists it high Hartson Sellers Cole took up a good position the tenacity of peak but Newcastle Sweep wide with Lee. That's good work by James, not once but twice. Harper in the right position again. Where do Luton go from here? That's their problem. Well, Priest comes up with an answer, and Oakes hairs through the centre to take on Howie, who knocks it off the ball, and Luton get a free kick. That's more like it, Martin. At the moment. Young John Hartson's pulling short for everything, and they don't really want that. What they've got to do is do exactly what Scott Oates, Oates did there, and that's run forward. Turn the back four. Turn Newcastle's defence and ease the pressure that way. Well, what is it, 10 yards outside the penalty area? David Fleet works very hard on uh, set plays. David Priest could be one involved, the number 10. Here he is. It's a swerving try, scooped up by Hooper. Smash a free kick. Lovely to watch. And from the clearance is Cole in here. Out comes Summer, got to the ball. In came Clark. Great resilience from Luton. Well, I'll be critical of Jurgen Sommer at times tonight, but he more than made up for it with that magnificent stop from Andy Cole. Clark with the corner. Sommer can't reassert himself in the air. Venison. Elliot's there. It looks such a slender lead for Luton, but it is still a lead. Beardsley. Out comes Summer, and uh, Lee can't rescue it. But it's when he came out at the feet of Andy Cole that all the Luton fans held their breath. Well, I would have been trying to keep Cole on his left side because I don't think he's as good on that side. You can see how he desperately trying to get it on his right. Then the goalkeeper's got a decision to make. And it had to be absolutely precise, his timing. It was. He made an effort for it. He got the ball cleanly. And he thanked 
David Priest for helping him in the follow-up. What a stirring spectacle this is. Newcastle will have increased their share of possession. Luton have clung desperately onto their lead. Oaks. Here's Beresford. Trey is in first. Every team, however talented, and we know all about Newcastle United, has to uh, just take their foot off the accelerator through uh, physiological reasons for uh, a moment or two. They're galvanizing themselves another assault on Summers' goal. Elliot. And Clark can't get there. That was Dreyer who snaked out that long left leg again. Priest. Sorry, Matt, I was just going to say this. It's been a smashing cup tie. It may only be 1-0, but it's been absolutely riveting. You've not been able to take your eyes off it for a second. And all the while, football logic tells you that Newcastle will equalise until you uh, remind yourself that this is the FA Cup and anything could happen. Beresford. Goalkeepers. David Peake must be at the stage now where he's thinking how many of my players are so tired that they can't do any more. And out of them all, I mean, I look around, most of them are okay. Jamie Campbell in this near side, he looks as tired as anybody. And that, he will be the main worry at the moment. We just saw sitting down on the bench alongside David Peake there, Tony Thorpe, the uh, Luton hero up at St James's Park, who scored the goal. The first goal of this enthralling tie it was cancelled out by Peter Beardsley's penalty. Thorpe, I'm sure, champing at the bit to play a part here. It's a ball break orchestrated by Howie Watson. Should be Julian James's. He's missed a lot of football recently because of a broken hand. Required the metal pinning. Recently won his place back, so he might be feeling the pace. Hartson is a well-angled header, and Oakes is away again. Beresford is very quick, but not quick enough. It's all down to Scott Oakes for Luton. Hooper keeps it out. Linton is roaring in. to his credit he did well, he did have eyes on the back of his head <laughs> <laughs> well the two players came from Leicester in a joint deal spotted the potential there when David Pleat was manager Scott Oakes and Des Linton it was all about them but give credit to David Pleat this is the right back Martin in the last 10 minutes of a cup tie they're winning 1-0 He's the furthest up the pitch from the rebound. That's incredible. It shows you what David Pleat is preaching here. To be adventurous, to play your football with the thumbs up from the manager. Right, he was 
so calm. I can't emphasize how impressed I was with his coolness with the rebound. I fully expected him to wrap his foot around it and smash it at goal. The last thing the players see when they leave the Luton dressing room is a sign saying the team is more important than the self. And the team have dug in in the second half. There's 10 minutes left, and Newcastle United proudly placed fourth in the Premiership. Have to score twice to stay in the FA Cup. Steve Howie has been sent upfield. There's Beardsley, there's Cole, there's Howie. There's still hope. Beresford. Beardsley. It's the corner. Sorry, Mark, the two centre-backs, two of the most experienced players, have really dug in well tonight. Defended the centre of the goal so well. And Beresford is unmarked. And it's knocked away by Telfer. Back header by Elliott. Hearts, look at that for calmness. Just guiding it down for Harper, and David Priest has popped up furthest forward, and he's hooked it over his shoulder to Oaks. That came off for Luton. Campbell, James. Well, no manager does uh, more homework than David Fleet, and Kevin Keegan, as you heard earlier from Nick Collins, paid uh, tribute to the preparation that Luton have put into this simply absorbing FA Cup tie. They played the football already. Mm. Luton say, but what they have done is they've worked so hard to get with them out. On comes Tony Thorpe in place of Jamie Campbell. Oh, you look tired. Thorpe, another from the Leicester connection. We often talk, Martin, you and I have said it before, but the FA Cup being the best cup competition in the world. And it's games like this that make it so. You don't get games like this in any other cup competition anywhere in the world. Howie. Here's Priest. Harper. Not panicking. It's not his style. Flag up against Oaks. He hates losing, I can tell you that. And he'll be inwardly praying that Newcastle's luck will turn. Hartson, who scored the first goal, and slipped a pass of real quality there to Linton, who set up the second. And showing there that he doesn't believe he's finished yet. Get back if he's shooting. You fool, what are you doing that far up the pitch? No worries, Alan Harper. A right back and a responsible player. Quite uh, worthy of filling in there. And Harper spreads it now. The second goal has given Luton so much. Thorpe. Another of the teenagers, he's 19. Back comes Oakes. Not content to sit on his goal. Scott Oakes here, was he? Well, the lad from the musical background has had Newcastle dancing to his tune. Well, it's not the biggest ground around. Just short of the uh, 13,000 capacity. Maybe now the Luton fans are starting thinking about making plans for Cardiff City away in round five. But with Newcastle's quality, they could still be counting their chickens. Might 
might be one or two more balls going out of the ground now. I know I'd be trying. <laughs> but that big net over there, it's about 30 foot higher than the stand. And there'll be a few clearing that. Beardsley. Beresford is round the back. Howie! Oh, that was a good chance. And he just didn't connect cleanly. Oaks. I fancy Peter Beers in it. I fancy that one. Howie, of course, did start his career as a forward player. He's become a very fine young defender. But it's back to his roots for the time that remains here. A long way for long that time to James. Here come Newcastle again with Beresford. Beardsley. Sellers with the shot. Well, I don't think it's there now. You <laughs> took the words from my mouth. <laughs> I don't. I but think he knows it. Because Scott Sellers hits this extremely well. Drops to him. He's just leaning back as he hits it. But he won't hit many better. And what is that? That takes a paint off the goalpost. Scott Oakes goes off. Scott Houghton, who was at the FA school at Lillishaw, as a classmate of Andy Coles. His career not yet hit the same heights. A spell with Spurs, where he had some first-team football. He really put on there have just run around and close people down and try and keep Luton at the right sort of tempo. What did David Tweet describe him to me as, Martin? Scott Houghton, he said, a bottle of pop. Someone who can fizz. Freese, who has done well. Hartson. What a learning process this has been for him. Offside. Coming up on Sky Sports, live football on Friday. Schoolboy International, England versus Wales. FA Carling Premiership on Sunday. A later start to our Super Sunday. Norwich City against Arsenal. Well, Alan Harper, who's only on a month-to-month -month contract here, <laughs> has certainly shown that Great loyalty to his employers, Luton Town, with a very crafty performance. Venison. Now Cole. Newcastle still at this late, late stage got one. You just wonder how Luton would panic. Harper, that was a bit risky. Dreyer, Harper again. Priest, great first touch. Oh, the referee. Needed the white stripe to go with the black. Linton made it his. Elliot. Beardsley still fevering away. James with a glance of the head. Lee. It's a good cross from Watson. And again, the auxiliary attacker, Steve Howie. But again, not near enough for Newcastle. Difficult chance, even for the best of strikers. The ball behind them, a very awkward height to take it at. He did well getting it towards goal. the shot Beardsley battered against Summers' left-hand post. Elliot, who's filling in at the back now with Howie up front. Telford. Linton. Off the head of Dreyer. Now Lee. To time added on. Now Clark and 
Beardsley confusing each other. Lee. Watson heading it on. Linton is there again. Telfer trying to be strong in defence, and he is. He still can't get it beyond the halfway line, but they might not need to. Right. Leeds United 2 2 with Gordon Strachan and David White's first goal for the club against Oxford. No, not even now. Not even at the death. Well, that's his best chance. Scott Howie again is the one who gets himself in there. And even as a centre-back, he'll be disappointed he hasn't tucked this one away. And who knows what a bit of a ride from there. Thorpe, forcing it through. But the flag is up. But the time is very nearly up. And the game is very nearly up for Newcastle United. Well, there may only be, what, just short of 13,000 in here, Martin. But for the looting players, if it stays like this, it'll seem like 60 after it. The reception they'll get. Clark. Beresford. Lee. That's Dreyer. He couldn't lift it over him. Jim Parker's got the watch out, the whistle in his hand. Hartson, who made it all possible with the first goal. Now looking to crown it all with a great run, a stinging shot. It breaks for Houghton. Telfer's on the edge of the area. Venison in the way. What a great note to finish it off. And Kevin Keegan goes across in characteristically sporting manner to congratulate David Fleet on a famous, famous Luton Town victory. And you can add the name of Luton to the lengthening list of shock sides in this season FA Cup. 18-year-old John Hartson scored the opening goal. And Scott Oakes, when Luton were really straining to keep out Newcastle in the second half, with a second, what a performance from David Fleet's players. A night to forget for Barry Venison and Newcastle United. And 24 hours after Blackburn were beaten, another of the Premiership's top four falls victim to a club from a lower league. Luton's work, we shouldn't forget, began up at St James's Park, where they were given little chance. But they almost won at the first attempt. Here at Kenilworth Road, they've completed the job in a classic FA Cup tie. And now it's off to Ninian Park a week on Sunday. Cardiff City and Luton Town will battle for a place in the quarterfinals. This is the place to be at the end of an FA Cup tie, the winner's dressing room. And tonight, against the odds, it's the home dressing room. And there's the man who's inspired it all. For all the quality Kevin King has assembled at Newcastle, it's not to be their year in the Cup. Luton proudly into round five at the end of a quite remarkable replay. Luton Town 2, Newcastle United 0. You've seen it, you can believe it. Martin, thank you. What a fabulous night. Luton Town 2, Newcastle United 0. Well, well, well. Another of the Premiership's big scalps is taken. And it's by Luton Town this time. A lot of football to look back on over that 90 minutes. A lot happening up and down the country tonight as well. We'll get you up to date as soon as we can. Short break and we'll be back here with Brian Kilcline and Mick Harford. to Luton Town. Newcastle United are out. Nick Collins is in the Luton dressing room. Nick. Right, well, with me is John Hartson, the man who scored the first goal, and Scott Oakes, who got the second. John, you were saying yesterday when we were at Henlow Grange, you thought you fancied yourself for a goal. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, score for a couple of months, and um, it's, always, it's always nice to score. 
and especially against such a good team as Newcastle, you know? How conscious were you of the fact that you may not get too many chances against a side like this, so it was important to take whatever chances came your way? Yeah, um, um, yeah, you don't get many chances in any game, really. Um, but it's a tremendous build-up play, and I think Julian James, the right back, put me through. And uh, I just touched it around the keeper, really. He's jumped over the ball, and I've just got an empty net, and it's just, it's just hitting the empty net. Show you the goal now. <laughs> <laughs> Took it very coolly. Get in there, yeah. <laughs> well happy with that. You enjoyed that. Well, let's bring Scott Oakes in as well, the man who got the second goal. That, a cracking team performance tonight. Yeah, we worked hard from uh, the front there, yeah, defending-wise. <laughs> and we looked uh, really alive on the attacking front, and it paid off. Were you looking to get your name on the score sheet? Of course, yeah. Always looking for that. That's the way you get noticed around here. But obviously, great team performance. The goal itself, I mean, you broke well down the left, and they, they look as if the chance might have gone away. Great touch there by Johnny. Took him in stride. Defender committed himself there. So you did well there. Yeah, I enjoyed that bit. And uh, I, mean, I was going to place it in the far yeah, corner. Yeah, Hooper yeah, got his hands yeah. to it. See Des Linton coming in. I thought I thought this was a shot by Des, but great pass. And I've been so happy to put that one of them in each game, you know. Definitely a pass, not a shot. Yeah, great pass. I'm claiming that one as well. Well, fifth round of the cup. Now it's Cardiff City away. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, from Swansea myself and. Uh, I'll have a lot of support there, a lot of family and friends. Can I just say mother and father watching Rome in Swansea as well? Oh, crikey, you will enjoy yeah, Cardiff. Yeah, they'll be happy, and all the Tratton boys in the club, get in there, guys. <laughs> Let's also bring in David Fleet, the, the winning manager. David, many congratulations. Was that a, a triumph for tactical acumen, do you no, think? No, not at all. The team, the team played well. They played with good movement when they got the ball. It was very difficult to get the ball because Newcastle was so fluid. But I thought they stuck to the task tremendously. They defended very well in front of the back four. The back four was superb. I never thought they created too many chances, Newcastle. Played some super football. I thought we were the more dangerous side. I'm just delighted for the lads who worked very hard this season and they're slowly turning things around a little bit and they're doing really well. Not many teams managed to keep a clean sheet against Newcastle either. I should think that's fairly pleasing, no, well, isn't it? Well, I said before, we, we needed for sure one goal because we knew Newcastle were capable of getting one. But really, we needed two. You know, our, we've got the two. Things have gone well for us tonight. We've got another game Saturday and um, we've got to come back down to earth and keep, keep batting away because I think we've got a lot of good young players. And I think the experienced players in this group I couldn't wish for a better group of experienced players to help the youngsters along, and I hope the youngsters appreciate that, because I think uh, we're beginning to get something going. How much can this cup run now really serve as a boost for the season? Because you're on a bit of a roll in the league now as well, aren't you? It's just a relief. It helps you breathe and helps you sleep at night. Um, we just have to see what happens. It's a cliche, every game as it comes, all that rubbish. But that literally is what it was. We've, we've worked today, we've done the job. The team were disciplined. The Keegan was marvellously generous at the end of the game. He said he thought we deserved it. And um, I do believe over the two games, I think we've, we've done the business. Listen, well done. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Thanks, David. Yes, very well done. And you must make a date to join Andy at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. David Pleat is in the boot room. and he spoke to him before that match. David was telling him what he planned to do. It's worked, hasn't it? They'll follow up tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. The games, incidentally, at Leeds, Arsenal, Sheffield, Wednesday and West Ham are all in extra time. We'll keep you up to date with the scores as soon as we get them. Uh, Mick Harford and Brian Kilkline here thoroughly enjoyed that with us. And Mick, you predicted it too. You were on Luton, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, I thought thoroughly deserved it. The other play takes uh, spot on what he says there. You know, I mean, they took the chances. They were under a lot of pressure uh, in the second half. Uh, you know, I mean, the two boys will get all the headlines tomorrow, but... I think you should have a look at the two centre-halves for Luton tonight. They were absolutely tremendous. Uh, Trevor Pig, John Dreyer, they deserve a lot of credit tonight. Well, let's look back on the best of the action. Here's the opening goal, scored by John Hartson inside the opening 20 minutes. It was a crucial 20 minutes for them as well, Mick, wasn't it? And they needed to score in that time. Yeah, Johnny's done tremendous. You know, I mean, he says he's rolled into empty net, but the lad's done absolutely brilliantly. And, uh, you know, I mean, nice and calm. And it's set him up when he's, you know, I mean, he's been one of the best players on the park tonight. It's given him a boost and... I mean, for finishing like that for such a young lad, you know, I mean, uh, he's a big lad, his touch is fantastic there, and, you know, I mean, you can't say, you can't say any higher of, of the finish, it's, it's, uh, that's top class finishing. And, uh, I'm sure one day he'll go on to better things, you know, I mean, there's high hopes from that, the club, and, you know, with his attitude he's got and his family behind him, he'll go a long, long way. Gavin Peacock, incidentally, has scored at Hillsborough, it's 2-1 to Chelsea now in that replay, 2-1 against Sheffield Wednesday. Barry Venison kept Newcastle in it for a long time tonight, so none more so than when he cleared off the line after Hartson again had got an important touch. Brian Kilkline, defensive player of the highest quality this, wasn't it? Yes, and Barry's been renowned for it all season. Um, I just think 
just at the end of the day, I don't think you can motivate the rest of the lads to perform to his, um, well, to the performance he performed tonight. You sensed it was going to be one of those nights for Newcastle United. There were chances in abundance in that second half. Peter Beardsley hit a post. This had you out of your seat, Mick, didn't it? Yeah, you know, we paint the pop up anywhere and create things out of nothing. Uh, I mean, I think we've got a bit of a, a lucky ri ricochet, but it's just his awareness and, I mean, the, the keeper hadn't died before the ball had got past him. Uh, he's lethal around there. I mean, he got a lucky break there. But, I mean, he's aware and he's... And another inch either side of the vein of goal and it would have had a different game but it was Luton's uh, night tonight and fully deserved. And then they sprang following a free kick. Andy Cole nearly had themselves an equaliser. But before we see that, let's just pop back down to the dressing rooms and join Kevin Keegan. Well, Kevin, at half-time you were saying you felt Luton had done their homework on you. Do you think that was ultimately the difference tonight? I thought they played very well. Yeah, you know, I mean, they... They sucked to let us come at them a little bit and then counter-attacked us. And I, I think on the night, you know, I mean, uh, just said a day of play, I hope you go all the way, it'd be lovely for you. I think the last time we were there was about the first cup final I watched. And on the night, although we had a lot of possession, um, I think they thoroughly deserved it. I mean, they're a small club, not big resources, and they've, they've turned us over. And that's the, the beauty of the cup. It's only a little bit painful when you're this side of it. But, uh, you know, good luck to them. Were you surprised by the way they kept the tempo going through the second half into the later stages? Not really. I mean, we've watched them a couple of times and that. You know, I, we were in this division last year and everyone was saying, oh, there's a, there's a massive gap between the Ensley First Division or, and the Premier League. But, it, it, you know, the, there's not that big a gap. And I think they proved it again tonight. They, they were, you know, they deserved the right to go to Cardiff. And um, I think some of the entertainers, as you've dubbed us, had a night off tonight. But uh, overall, this year, they performed very well. And uh, like a lot of Premier League clubs, we'll be able to concentrate on trying to get into Europe, the only route that's left with us, which is to finish either third or fourth in the, uh, in the Premier table. Is that something you're already trying to drum into the players' heads, as it were? Yeah, obviously they're disappointed. And, you know, we've had a tremendous following down here. But, uh, you know, again, I think the crowd were treated to a terrific game of football. Um, you can go all over the world and watch football, and you might think the Brazilian style's better, and you might think that it's great in Spain. But, you know, give me a game like that at any time. It, it had everything, you know, and we were in the post and stuff like that, and they were counter-attacking us, and there was thrills and spills, and uh, at the end of the day, people pay good money, and I, th I thought they got a decent cup tie. And then, as I say, they deserve to go through. Uh, no qualms about that. Got to learn to be a good loser at this game. It's difficult sometimes, but... Well, very sporting, Kevin. Thanks for joining us. Good luck in the league. Well Come done. Come watch him in the final. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Typically generous. That uh, really is the way to take defeat, Brian, isn't it? If you have to. Uh, I think he's been very diplomatic there. I'm sure he would have liked to have said a few more of the words, but... Uh, He'll keep them for the dressing room, eh? Uh, I think he's left them in the dressing room, to tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he'd be going back there. But at the end of the day, you've got to look at Luton, and they perform magnificently. Um, the whole 11 players, I don't think there's one you can really point out. They defended really well. Well, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. You mentioned their defensive qualities. Here's another opportunity that went to begging at still 1-0 this time, remember, uh, to Luton. You'd have put your hat on Cole scoring in these circumstances usually, wouldn't you? Well, all the way through the season, he's been going into situations like this and the ball's just been dropping nicely to him. Uh, the goalkeeper was having a tricky time just before this, but I think he's made up for it and uh, probably kept them in the game. Be a magnificent save. But, uh, Here we go. This is just, uh, well, it wasn't, it wasn't to be Newcastle's night. Right, here comes the second Luton goal. So late on, really, well, there was not a way back. What a strike this was. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great header from Johnny Hart, and he's, he's, he's laid them in, and Scott Oakes has got a lot of pace. Uh, skipped by uh, Beresford. Uh, I mean, I, I thought he would try and curl it in the far corner. Hoop has made a great save. But uh, as Andy Gray said, this is a brilliant piece of skill from Des Linton, and uh, Scott's got the easiest chance in the world. I mean, uh, Put a lot of credit to Des and Johnny in the build-up. I mean, it was uh, fantastic football. Here we go. It looks even better from that angle. Yeah, it doesn't miss those. Sometimes it does, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Good touch by Johnny. Yeah, great, great little touch. He should be getting in the box now, though, Johnny Arton. As you say, it's. I mean, Hooper's made a terrific stop as well, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, but as, as Andy did say earlier, you know, I mean, what's the full-back doing up there? He must have ran 78 yards to get up there. You know, them, those two lads are good mates. Uh, 
So uh, they'll, be, they'll be celebrating tonight. As we watch this go in, I can tell you that Bolton Wanderers have gone 2-1 up at Highbury. So the holders are staring defeat in the face. Arsenal 1, Bolton Wanderers 2. This is Luton's second goal. Scored by Scott Oakes, and it's one that he'll remember for a long, long time. 2-1 to Bolton Wanderers at Highbury. There's a lot of football up and down the country tonight. When we come back, we'll get you right up to date with that. Chelsea leading at Sheffield Wednesday, and Bolton are in front. Coming up next, we've got the football news when we finished at uh, 10, 10, 15, live boxing. Gary Logan fights Spike Cheney for the WBC International Welterweight title. Latest scores, and uh, we'll keep you right up to date between now and 10. Finish off in the football news. Most of these games should be finishing by then. Bristol City are through to the fifth round. Fourth round replays. Look, Bolton, a 2-1 up at Highbury. Jason McAteer has got their second. Barnsley have beaten Plymouth. 2-2 at Elland Road. David White kept Leeds in it with an equaliser into injury time. Gavin Peacock has edged Chelsea in front of Hillsborough. Darren Beckford scored for Oldham at the Victoria ground and it's West Ham nil, Notts County nil. But are the holders, Arsenal, facing defeat tonight as well. Uh, FA Cup fifth round draw. Luton go to Cardiff next. Oldham play Barnsley. Uh, Kidderminster, still don't know whether it's Notts County or West Ham. Wolves play Ipswich. Bolton or Arsenal, and at the moment, Bolton are edging it against Aston Villa. Oxford or Leeds play Chelsea or Sheffield Wednesday. Wimbledon and Manchester United, who were 2-1 to one before tonight. Probably evens by now. Bristol City face Charlton. Other football tonight, Scottish Cup third round replay. Dundee have beaten Clyde Bank by two goals to one. Well, David Pleat was saying, Mick, that it's, I mean, aside from winning tonight, which is wonderful, it's a lifeline. The money's desperately needed, isn't it? It's Cardiff City next. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, when they went up to uh, Newcastle, everyone thought it was a big payday for them. Uh, they thought they'd just, as I said earlier, they'd go away and get beat and get you know, a few bob in the bank. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's going to snowball now. Uh, the tickets, ticket sales are going to be very good. The chairman will be very happy. And, you know, I mean, from the top of the bottom of the club, it'll be a bubbling little club now and everyone will be looking forward to the next round. It's important, uh, Brian, that Newcastle react the right way to this defeat, isn't it? And don't let their season fall apart now. No, I think they'll be able to pick themselves up. Uh, it'll be a, well, for Saturday, it'll be a hard game, Wimbledon, but uh, I'm sure today they'll, well, well, they won't be, well, they can't wait until Saturday to get out there, play against Wimbledon, get this out of the system and carry on with their, the league. What price Manchester United now make? They were two to one. Well, I think it's going to be very difficult to stop them. I mean, they've got a difficult tie at Wimbledon. Uh, you know, I mean, they always get a hard game down, down there, but you know, I mean, Manchester United on the travels, I think you've got to fancy them against anyone. And the treble, possibly? It's, 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 uh, it's a good chance they could do it, yeah. I know it's Alex Ferguson talking at the weekend for the first time about that and saying, well, it's a possibility now. Do you I agree? Think, yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah, the, I mean they've got a magnificent squad there. You know, I mean, you can chop and change week in, week out. And I mean, he's got a lot of strength and depth. And you know, who who says who, who can stop them? So I wouldn't bat against them now. Leeds United two, Oxford United three at Allen Road. It is now. So Arsenal are trailing, and Leeds are trailing. Jim Magilton has scored that third goal for Oxford. Mick Harford, thanks for coming tonight. Enjoyed your Thank company. You. Brian Kilkein, yeah. nice to see you as well. Uh, the football news coming up at ten o'clock. Friday at 7 with more live football, Schoolboy International between England and Wales. That's the first in a series of matches from the Victory Shield. Ford Super Sunday this coming weekend. A later start, Norwich against Arsenal. And the Ford Monday Night Football. We're off to the Dell to see Southampton play Liverpool. All the scores coming up. What a night it's been at Kenilworth Road. Thanks for your company. Don't go away. See you next time. Goodbye for now.